Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting. I'm here with another, uh, oh, Black Sheep Knitting, we're in Needham, Massachusetts. I have another um, video here with a helpful hint, and this is a really must-have technique um, when you're knitting. You need to learn how to fix a simple mistake. So people will come in and say, I've dropped a stitch. Well, sometimes it's a drop stitch or a stitch that hasn't been knit. And I'll show you the difference in just a minute. Uh, picking up stitches, so there's a difference. A, a true drop stitch is where you have a stitch hanging out somewhere in your knitting. And you've gone by and somehow it fell off your needle, you didn't notice it. Um, that happens all the time to all of us. Uh, the great thing about this technique is that you don't have to pull out all your knitting to fix it. And if you learn how to do this, you're going to save yourself a trip to the yarn store to get it fixed. What I'm going to first show you is on stockinette. I'm knitting something in the round, and I'll show you how to fix a drop stitch and a stitch that is not, um, has not been knit. So I'm going to show you the difference right now. So here we are with, um, I'm knitting a sleeve in the round, and I'm knitting on stockinette. And here, all of a sudden, I discovered that I had a dropped stitch. Now, I've dropped this out on purpose. If you've dropped this and you didn't notice it and you kept knitting, there wouldn't be a lot of um, yarn in here to fix it, so it'll be a little bit tight. What I did was I just dropped this down, and so I still have what I call our bars right across here. And what they are is this is just the yarn that's knit this stitch and knit this stitch, but it's not in the middle stitch. Now, a lot of people use a crochet hook. Uh, which is fine to do this technique. I like to do it with just my needle because then I have, don't have to go find my crochet hook to fix it. So I'm going to stick my right needle into, from the front to the back, into my dropped stitch. And then I'm going to go to the next bar, and it's the next piece of yarn that's attached to the stitch in the row above this and I'm going to lift the drop stitch over the uh, bar. So now I've made a stitch, as you can see, so I've corrected that one. And then I'm going to go again and find the next bar up, which is in the next row, and I'm going to lift the bar over the stitch, and then the final one is the row that I'm actually on, and I'm going to lift this stitch over. Um, okay, so I'm on very small needles. I think these are 12 inch circular needles. And so I'm lifting this over. You can see this come through, and now I'm back in business, as you can see. So suppose you've gone along and uh, you're, very often this happens to people at, when you're knitting on two needles, but you see your yarn is in one place and you've got stitches here. So here's the yarn and you've got stitches, which means they just have not been knit yet. And that can often, you can often see that when you're knitting back and forth, you'll see it on this row so you'll see it pretend you don't see me doing this but what you're going to see at the end of your needle what you'll see at the end of your needle is yarn that's attached to this second stitch but the stitch is hanging out here so what's happened um, what's happened is that hasn't been knit and you need to turn your needles around and move the stitch over and re-knit it. In this case, because I'm in the round, it's not a problem. But if you see that on your needles, just like this, on your left-hand needle, if you see, this is the stitch from the row before, so what you'd have to do is go back here and rework the stitch. Okay, 
Now this stitch has, this is another problem that you can have, the stitch has fallen out. So here I have this bar that's going across, here's a stitch, and I'm on a purl side. So this is actually reverse stockinette, but if you were in garter, you could see the same thing. So what happens is your yarn needs to be in front of the stitch and you need to pick it up this way and you lift from the back you're going to lift this stitch over and it makes that what looks like a garter stitch. Now what you can do if you're working on um, garter or reverse stockinette, you can just turn your work around and it will look like a knit stitch. Um, I'll, I'll probably explain that in another video. But going further, so suppose I have this, which is the same as you saw on the back. I have this, again, this piece of yarn hanging out and it goes from this stitch to that stitch. So you can see that it's in here and here, but it isn't in this middle stitch. So again, we have a, a knit stitch or the right side of a stockinette stitch facing us. So I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to lift this over. Because really what knit stitches and purl stitches are, are just interlocking loops. Uh, practice. Cast on a bunch of stitches and practice dropping stitches and just drop them down. I think I'll do another video showing garter and showing how to pick up stitch a stitch that's maybe 20 rows down. Robin just told me she did one that was 50 rows down. So it can be done and trust me it's a lot faster than ripping out 50 rows of knitting and having to start again. Um, because it's August, we're getting in lots of great new yarns, and I wanted to show you a few of them today. Um, the first one I have here is one from Wool Addicts, which is a Lang yarn, and it's called Honor. And it is Surrey Alpaca and Merino. And for those of you who have trouble with mohair, this is the answer for you. This is the softest, yummiest, non, I don't think it sheds very much, and it's not itchy. Surrey alpaca is just yummy. And I did knit a little swatch, and I was getting between three and a half and four stitches to the inch. This yarn is so new, I haven't found any projects, but I will, will put one on, the, um, on this email as a sample of something that you could do in it. I'm just dying to cast on and use this yarn. It's so soft. So they've got a beautiful green and a light green. They look almost the same, but they're not. This is more of a sea green. This is kind of a slate blue. Then here's a little bit brighter blue. This might even be gray as I look at it. This is a lighter blue. This is a pale, yummy, yummy blue. This is the pinky mauve color that I was knitting with. A white and a deep, deep navy blue. It's gorgeous. So that's one new yarn of many. And we also got more yarn in from Sweet Georgia, who we love. And we got in some kits that are for a shawl. And this shawl is called Sail. And it's a beautiful three color shawl and we have um, five colorways. This one's called Luna C. It's three skeins of fingering weight. And I'm gonna guess you're on somewhere between a four and a six needle. I generally use a six on a fingering weight for a shawl. This one, this colorway is called Black Pearl and this yarn has a tiny bit of sparkle in it. As maybe the other one does. I think they all have Yep, this one has a tiny bit of spark sparkle. You can barely see it. And the next one I have is called Golden Minnow. And this middle one has the sparkle in this one. 
this one I really love, wow, called Tiger Shark. And the sparkles in this one. And last, we have Seize the Day, S-E-A-S, -E the day. And the sparkle is not in this one. This is the no sparkle one. So those are great kits. We're going to have them in our online shop and you can purchase those or you can come in. Remember, we are open Tuesday through Saturday from one to five. Some people think we open at 11, but unfortunately right now we're not. I don't have enough staff to do that. So come visit us and the things to look forward to don't have a date yet but we are going to have a sidewalk sale so um, look out for that because I think you'll get some bargains anyway have a great week and I'll see you next week bye bye